Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Wednesday, May 19th, and I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop tonight. First, what the heck is happening with Bitcoin? Digital currencies briefly went into a free fall in early trading Wednesday after China's Banking Association issued a warning over the risks associated with them. A statement posted on the Industry Association's website said members should, quote, resolutely refrain from conducting or participating in any business activities related to virtual currencies. Yikes. Bitcoin dropped below $40,000 for the first time in more than three months. Bitcoin's price was down 19% at one point Wednesday to just over $35,000 according to the crypto news site Coindesk. And that's well below the recent high of over $63,000 it reached just last month. This all comes after Tesla's Elon Musk said the company would no longer accept Bitcoin as payments for its cars. And Ethereum, another big dog in the crypto world, was down more than 35% this week, according to the trading app Robinhood. The selling was so intense that the website of Coinbase, an online brokerage for digital currencies, was down this morning and getting pricing on some of those currencies was difficult. Coinbase's stock dropped 8% and it was down 36% Wednesday from the peak it reached on April 16th. Oof, what a tough day for crypto. And music lovers, I have some good news for you. Lollapalooza is returning to Chicago this summer, a year after the coronavirus pandemic forced the cancellation of the music festival that attracts hundreds of thousands of people to a lakefront park. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot's office said yesterday that Lollapalooza will return to Grant Park at full capacity from July 29th through August 1st. And the lineup has now been released. Headliners include Foo Fighters, Post Malone, Tyler the Creator, and Miley Cyrus. And there will be more than 100 other artists at the event. And on social media, feedback on the list has been mixed. With some pumped to see their favorite artists snag a spot and others, well, less than impressed. Tickets are on sale now, but people attending the fest will be required to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19 or have negative COVID-19 test results the day before entry. Organizers said they will detail that whole process in early July, so stay tuned for that. And Kroger has announced that fully vaccinated customers and most employees no longer have to wear a mask starting Thursday. In the announcement, Kroger cited the new guidance from the CDC that states fully vaccinated Americans no longer have to mask up in most settings. The company says this applies to stores, distribution centers, plants, and offices, unless otherwise required by state or local mandates. For those who are not vaccinated, Kroger is requesting those customers to keep on wearing a mask. Employees in Kroger pharmacies and clinics will still be required to wear a mask due to the CDC's guidance for healthcare settings. Now, as a reminder, in Ohio, we're following this guidance as well. So overall, the mask mandate is lifted if you're vaccinated right now in the state, but if you're unvaccinated, you should keep that mask on until June 2nd. And would you wear a wristband that had your vaccine information on it so you didn't have to carry your card around? Now, some businesses are making the decision to require this kind of proof, so a Colorado doctor invented something to make it a bit easier. It's called the Immuniband, and it comes equipped with a scannable QR code that takes users to a passcode-protected site that stores confirmation that you've gotten your shot. The server is encrypted and HIPAA compliant. Um, we have the pin code protection, and we really work hard to, to ensure data security. The doctor who invented the band says he hopes it gives people in all 50 states a bit more peace of mind. And before I go, let's talk a little bit about the weather. For my Northwest Ohio pals who are enjoying this heat, you are in luck because that heat is just starting to crank up. Tomorrow very well could be our first 90 degree day. And with that heat comes a stretch of humidity through the weekend. Temperatures near 90 stick around for a few days, culminating in a chance of storms on Sunday. You know, you win some, you lose some, right? But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you're in the loop.